Okay, so good evening everyone. Good evening. I hope you enjoy the worship to our living God. Because that is the most important thing na gagawin po ng bawat mananampalataya sa ating Panginoong Yesus. So today we are going to know how to live in the kingdom of God. So living in the kingdom that all people who accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, of course, we belong, we are transferred from the dominion of darkness into this marvelous light. And that is now we are living in the kingdom of God because we have only one king. And that king is Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords that we need to obey and worship. So today, so paano nga ba mamuhay? So the Kingdom of God is like, paano tayo mamuhay on this Kingdom that we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Kita po natin that uh, we see an example of this emphasis on the kingdom in Matthew chapter 5, verse seven, uh, 5 to 7, chapter 5 to 7, where the Lord's sermon deals primarily with how one is to live and conduct himself as a member of this kingdom. So, kung paano po tayo mamuhay sa uh, kingdom nito? So let us read chapter Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 to begin our study on this section of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, 1 and 2 says, When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, So marami, we are very familiar with this Sermon on the Mount, you know? So we're in the most popular sermon that Jesus Christ had conducted. So the Sermon on the Mount is a collection of topics that Jesus addressed this occasion and partially mentioned by other gospel in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 17. The setting is a hillside overlooking the Sea of Galilee. So the Lumpusina sa mountain at nakita but they are a very nice view on the mountain of Galilee nakikita po nila doon. So makita po natin that it is very unique because the topography doesn't exist in other parts of the lake. So this was near the town of Capernaum and where both Jesus and Peter lived as adults. So Lumpusina lumaki si Jesus Christ. So Matthew says that after Jesus finished his sermon or teaching, he came down and after healing several people from the crowd, he went into Peter's home and even healed Peter's mother-in-law who was suffering from a high fever. So maalam po natin during the ministry of Jesus Christ, there are lots of people are coming and following Jesus Christ to get their healing. So even here, nakita po natin that the mother in law of Peter ay pinagaling din po ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So the Sermon of the Mount deals with five major subjects. So makita po natin dito, the first is the Beatitude. And from chapter 5 verses 1 to 16, but we will not go through its verse, but we will have an overview only. So the law from chapter 5, uh, verse 17 to 48. And our relationship with God. Uh, from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 34. And relationship with others. Of course, after the most important thing is our vertical relationship with God. And horizontal. Our relationship with our fellow believers. And of course, our relationship to the world. Amen. So our workplace. 
So, and the way of life. So, paano po tayo mamuhay bilang isang Kristiyano? We can see in Beatitude, in chapter 5, verses 1 to 16. So, hindi po natin makita yung word Beatitude sa Bible, but the Beatitude does not appear, appear in the New Testament. So, it is the word Beatitude. Beatido or blessed. So we are familiar with the word blessed. That is why we call this beatitude, right? So blessed is the poor in spirit. Or, diba? So there are nine of these, and all of them begin are structured in the same way. So they make a promise. They deal with spiritual things. So it's spiritual na bagay po ang pinag-usapan. And they are direction for people in the kingdom. So kung paano po tayo ibigay uh, makita po natin it will give us direction kung paano po tayo mamuhay sa kingdom of God. So one needs to remember the idea that the beatitude and what is written here in the sermon on the mount are directed towards these things. So the teaching about our anda so, kung paano po yung behavior natin, yung conduct, our attitude, and our relationship. So, yun po yung tinuturo po dito in the Sermon on the Mount. So, the, 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 makita po natin, they can understand what is being taught, but the content is impractical to them in context because they are not member of the kingdom of God. So makita po natin, maybe there are some followers of Jesus Christ that they don't have yet a relationship with Jesus Christ. So, but on their own understanding, in their own knowledge, because they are not member of this kingdom, so parang opposite sa kanilang paningin, sa kanilang pagkaunawa. Kung makita po natin sa mga unbeliever and believer, there is a distinction. So for us, we are... Meron na tayong accident na nangyari sa atin, but, but we are still joy, we are joyful, we are happy, di ba? But in the world, for unbeliever, when they make this uh, accident na nangyari sa kanilang buhay or problems, parang malaking deal po ito sa kanila, o isang dago. So the approach that Jesus used in Beatitude was a style that the Jewish rabbi and when introducing these this, uh, lessons with a question or a paradox. So the Beatitude were contradiction that challenges the preconceived notion of life and philosophy. So opposite talaga sa mundo. If you want to be a good servant, so you must be, if you want to be a leader, you must be a servant. You are so very opposite. But in the world, in the corporate world, kailangan... So, gusto mong mataas sa position, of course, you must be in a higher uh, position level. So, the spiritual, spiritually poor will obtain riches in heaven. So, the mourner will be comforted and the gentle will gain earth and those who are thirsty for righteousness will be satisfied. So, in the Beatitude, Jesus gives insight into the spiritual reality that operates in the kingdom of heaven. So these are spiritual principles by which we in the kingdom na dapat po tayo mamuhay. So makita po natin dito na there is a persecution in the name of Jesus. Sometimes natin po paglilipot, marami rin tayo mga persecution o mga pagsubok na sometimes we are thinking na yes, I accepted Jesus Christ, but bakit ganito pa yung nangyari sa akin? Yung pamilya ko, nagka-COVID, di ba? Yung mga anak ko, ka-COVID, o yung iba, namatayan. So, mas maraming, parang mas marami pang pagsubok na mabuti pa before, but hindi ko naman na-encounter ito. So, sometimes there are some challenges sa ating pong uh, pamumuhay. So, this is unusual reaction to those who are persecuted. So they usually react with fear, anger, or a desire of revenge. Sometimes we have to tayo, di ba? May mga kaaway tayo, di ba? They to make revenge with them. But in the kingdom, the spiritual laws work in such a way that those who suffer for Christ actually 
rejoice in their suffering. So, mas lalo po tayong, uh, even though we are suffering, but we feel joyful sa ating pong buhay. So, makita din po natin in this uh, beatitude, the disciple in the kingdom influence this principle. So, they are distinct. We are to be the soul of the earth. Diba? Nagtayo po yung nagbibigay ng labor sa mundo ito. And we are the light of the world. So, makita dapat ito ay maging distinctive sa atin bilang isang uh, follower of Jesus Christ. So, this distinction is ultimately perceived in good life. So, ma mabuti po natin pamumuhay at good works. Of course, it will resort sa mabuti po natin pagawa. So, it is not only indicative of the kingdom but also reveal the true nature of God. So, mas lalo po makikita ng tao kung paano po tayo mamuhay bilang isang kristyano. So, the beatitude, we see a man as he is the regenerated state. So, dito po makita po natin iyong po yung tumangga sa ating Panginoong Isus ay talagang binago ng ating Panginoong Isus. Meron pong changes or regeneration na nangyari sa kanyang buhay. There is a change. So this is the practical out of working of an individual who is born again in Jesus Christ. So makita po natin na uh, and the next is the law. In chapter 5, verses 17 to 48. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness surpass of the scribe and Pharisee, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So makita po natin using the law. Oh, na sometimes uh, during the time, yung mga tao, yung mga Jews, they are very religious in obeying the law. And they are thinking that they are doing the right thing sa kanila pong buhay. Nakala nila yun yung tama. Now once they follow the law, alam nila na ito ay uh, magbibigay ng uh, kalungudan sa Diyos. But Jesus Christ, he, na, uh, hindi ganyan pa ito ng another meaning. Yung pagsunod po nila sa kautusan. So the law in this verse, and it reveals that the higher righteousness of the disciple is the quality that distinguishes them and makes them useful in the kingdom of God. So in Matthew 5, 17, 48, Jesus makes a series of comparison or putting the people that has been taught about the law by their teacher and then comparing this teaching with the essence of the spiritual law or given by the one who is originally gave the law to Moses. Na makita po natin, sabi nga dito na na ating Panginoong Isus, Jesus command on five areas of teaching in the law. The law of Moses that they received from their teacher and he compare each of these with the true essence. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Ng mga katuluan na ito, that teaching actually mean according to the one who is giving the law. Sino ba nagbigay ng kautusan? Of course, our God. So, ano ba ibig sabihin dito? Sabi nga dito, the first is, in Matthew chapter 5, verses uh, 21 to 22, You have heard that the ancient were told, You shall not commit adultery, uh, murder. And whoever commits murders, shall be liable to the court. But I say to you, that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, you shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. So makita po natin dito na the Jewish people, they are thinking na unless they are bringing it into the extreme. Na kapag hindi na nakapatay ng tao, meaning you did not yet violate the law. Hindi mo pa na-violate unless na nakapatay ka ng actual na tao. But Jesus Christ here give emphasis that you don't need to kill the person before you can commit 
martyr. Sabi na ating Panginoong Isus, But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty. So, ibig sabihin, magalit ka lang, magtanim ka ng galit sa iyong kapatid, sa ibang tao. Jesus Christ is telling you, you had already committed murder. Mamamatay tao ka na pala. So, huwag po tayo magtanim ng galit sa ating kapwa because Jesus Christ telling you, because Jesus Christ is telling us about what is in your heart, sa puso mo. So, it doesn't mean the practical na pagpatay, but here, Jesus Christ leveled up. Na kapag tayo po ay magtanim ng galit sa ating kapwa, you are already committing this crime. So, Jesus pegged the crime at the beginning of anger and resentment towards others. And that keeping of the law means a conscious effort or reconciliation and not just avoiding the extreme which would be murder. And number two, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 28, you have heard that was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So, mas matindi, di ba? Because during the time they are thinking, yung mga Jews na ito, na once they give a letter of divorce to their partner, meaning they oblige, they fulfill the law already. They are excused to their responsibility. But here Jesus is telling us that they have been told to manipulate the law in order to justify their adultery with easy divorce. So they told, as long as I give my wife a bill of divorce, I have not broken God's law. When I divorce her, Jesus again situate the true sin as impurity in the heart. So, sa puso, na kapag tayo pala itumingin sa babae na mayroong pagnanasa, diba? with blast, or babae, tumingin sa lalaki na mayroong pagnanasa, so, it's also, it will be equivalent to adultery. Because he is looking what is in our heart. He explained where the true sin was and that keeping the law, he really means sexual purity you know, and fidelity. And number three, in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses uh, 33 to 34, again, you have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not make false vows. But shall fulfill your vow to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for this is the throne of God. So makita po natin na sometimes we are, madali na tayo gumawa ng mga commitment, di ba? We are making some vow, or maybe we are swearing sa ating mga anak, di ba? And we are committing to them, but actually, wala naman tayong intention talaga na fulfill, eh, sundin yun, yung mga vows na yun. So, ganito din yung mga Jews, that the Jews at the time had learned a complex manner of making selective vows, which they feel they could break when it was convenient. Yeah. Even, meron silang mga, even sa mga company, they are, they, they, before they enter into a business, they are making a contract. But, but their heart, their heart is telling them, later on, anyway, later on, I can make some changes or make, not fulfill this commitment. So Jesus reveals that vow are not necessary when one has an honest heart. So he's talking about our honesty. Sa mga vows na ginagawa po natin. And number four, we can see also in Matthew chapter 5, Verses 38 to 39. 
You shall heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps on your right cheek, seat, torn the other to him also. Diba? Sometimes ito, ginagawa nilang practical na interpretation nila. Diba? So kung pinatay mo yung anak ko, of course, buhay din ang kapalit nito. Diba? But here, Jesus wanted us a right justice. So their system at the time relied on the law as the tool for restitution and very often as a cover for revenge. You know, sometimes ito yung ginagamit natin yung uh, way to make our revenge sa ibang tao. Kapag tayo ay nagrabyado, so are making revenge. So Jesus told them that the higher principle of the law was mercy. And not simply extracting justice or revenge. Dapat yung mangingibabaw, mayroon po tayong mercy. Makita po natin that one of the attributes of God, that our God is merciful. So this uh, attribute of God was shared to humanity. Na dapat tayo ay mayroon mercy. Dyan. And number five, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 44, you have heard that it was said, you shall not love your neighbor, and you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So parang napakahirap gawin nito, di ba? Bilang follower of Jesus Christ. So being uh, in the kingdom of God, so you are a national, you have a um, citizenship of heaven, of course being a member of this kingdom, so you must have a patriotism. So makita po natin that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. So makita po that it is Jesus said to us, love your enemies. Sino yung kaaway natin ngayon? Sino ba hindi kasundo, kasundo po natin ngayon? So you need to love them. You need to pray for them. Amen. So they would be used the law to build a wall around themselves. And keep others out. All done as a way of isolating themselves. So Jesus showed them that the one purpose of the law was to reveal God's goodness. So, bakit ibinigay yung pakusan? Para may pakita po sa buong mundo yung goodness na ating pong Panginoon. So, Jesus showed them that one purpose of the Lord is to reveal the goodness of God. That to be like God means to have justice and especially mercy toward strangers and those who were depressed. You know? So, makita po natin. And the next in chapter 6, verses 1 to 34, to be long, to be belong in the kingdom of God, we need to have a relationship with God. So, in this passage, Jesus teaches them how to have a proper relationship with God. Paano ba tayo nagkaroon ng tamang relasyon sa Diyos? Of course, you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Before that, right relationship to be established. So makita po natin in these uh, verses, the practice goodness to our God with a view of pleasing Him, not men. So dapat yung main goal ng bawat follower of Jesus Christ is to please our God. Because sometimes we are man pleaser po tayo, di ba? We want to please others. Gusto natin ma-please sila. But if you do to please the main in every uh, activities na gagawin po natin, we need to ask ourselves is God will be pleased on these things na gagawin mo? So, you, you, you don't need to do it. So, makita din po natin that uh, in order for us 
to have a relationship with God, we need to pray to God. So prayer. So prayer is simply communicating with God. So talking. Dapat meron pong uh, uh, two-way communication. Ito yung way po natin. But right now, sa panahon natin, marami po social media, marami na mga platforms. Now we're in, we can communicate with one another. But even though how advanced the technology is, sometimes we feel na parang isolated pa rin tayo, di ba? So makita po natin sa that pray to God in order to communicate with Him and not simply to impress, impress others with your piety. Sometimes napakita natin na magaling tayo mag-pray, maano uh, ma tayo sa public, yun yung ginagawa ng mga parisi. They are showing it publicly kung, kung gaano sila mag-pray. Kaya tinawag sila na ating Panginoong Isus, you are people priests. So in three, trust in God to provide for all your physical and spiritual needs. So alam po natin na every one of us, meron po tayo mga physical needs na mga pangangailangan. Kasi rin ngayon, uh, mga mag-enrollment mag na or here in Saudi Arabia, nag-start na po yung enrollment. So marami po mga bills, mga payments and next month, mag-review na naman yung levy namin. <laughs> But praise God, I will trust in God that He will provide the mga needs po namin. So I need to pay for five dependents. <laughs> so I believe that God will provide. So we need to trust in God to provide all your physical needs, of course your spiritual needs also. Nang bawat isa po sa atin ay kailangan po natin lumago spiritually, of course. So Jesus encourages his audience to understand the nature of the kingdom or the beatitude. So the quality of life that they should strive for all as a soul and life po tayo on earth. So ito po yung essence ng Pautusan. And guides them in practical ways to have a meaningful relationship with God. So dapat yun po yung uh, Dini desire po natin. So the element of proper relationship with God are followed by the key idea in having blessed relationship with people in the kingdom. So kailangan po natin talaga. That is why we need to have fellowship with one another, to encourage one another. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, In everything therefore, treat people the same way. You want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. So, kung ano bang gusto mo na i-treat ka ng ibang tao? If they wanted you to treat you fair, of course, you need to treat them also the same way. So, upon this principle is based all of the teaching in the law and the prophets on how we must treat one another in order to bless ourselves and to please our God. Of course, kung binitreat po natin properly, yung mga co-workers po natin, yung mga anak po natin, or other people na ma-encounter po natin, so those things, they will also treat us the same way. So the way of life, paano po tayo mamuhay on this kingdom of God? So having set forth the parameters and the working, inner working here on earth, Jesus explained the way to enter into a relationship with the Father, into the kingdom of heaven. So we need to enter the narrow gate of Christ. Why? Why? Bakit tinawag na narrow gate? Dahil hindi siya madali, di ba? At maraming hindi nakakapasok po dito. Because it is the narrow gate because it is the only way. And that only way is Jesus Christ. Sabi na ating Panginoong Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. 
But many people, they don't believe on Jesus Christ as the only one. That is why it is narrow. At kakaunti lang po ang nakakasumpong ito. So later on, at his crucifixion, the disciple will understand just how narrow and difficult this gate really is. Di ba? Nung kasama pa ni Jesus Christ sa mga kanyang mga disipulo, di ba? even his brother are, are not believing about Jesus Christ. Hindi na niwala kay Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Later on, when Jesus Christ was crucified, and he rose again at pagpakita sa kanila at doon pa lang sila maniwala. So Jesus is the only gate that one can enter through. So Jesus Christ is the only gate. Siya na talaga yung daan. There is no other way. And faith in Him is the only way to enter it. That, that is why we are saved by faith. By grace through faith. You know? So it is by faith in Him. Pagtitiwala sa ating Panginoong Isus is the only way na makapasok po tayo on this kingdom. And beware of false prophets who produce neither the teaching nor the fruit of the kingdom of Christ. That's how you know them. They have neither the fruit nor the teaching. So the true prophets have the fruit and the teaching. So we have to judge Christianity or any other religion by its fruit. So paano mo may judge na ito ay tunay o hindi? Diba? Paano mo malalaman yung isang puno o ito ay mangga o uh, ubas? You will know them by their fruits. So malalaman natin sila by their fruits and by their teaching of God. And number three, but not the least, don't just hear the word of Christ. You need to do. Of course, there is an obedience. Dapat meron po pa si Lord. So do, do not just hear the word of Christ. Act upon them in order to enter into this kingdom. Many are called, but, but few are chosen. Many hear all of what he said that day in the Sermon of the Mount, and they were amazed at his teaching. But only a few entered through the narrow gate of faith in him and received the cross, and he called on his disciples to pray. Yeah, marami po, during when Jesus Christ do his Sermon on the Mount, marami nakikinig. But to konti lang po ang sumunod dito. And before Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, He gave the great commission. And that is the mission of the church. And that is to go and make the disciple of all nations. So tayo pong lahat ay tumayo at uh, let us uh, let us pray bago mag- po tayo umawit papurihan po natin ang ating Panginoong Jesus sa kanya pong salita na ating pong napakinggan kung paano po tayo mamuhay sa kanya pong kaharian while we are here on earth that Jesus Christ is the only way and the gate is narrow and Jesus telling us I am the way the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Paano po tayo makapasok? It is by faith. By putting our trust in Him. That is why in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only name in that Son. That whosoever believes on Him should not perish but have an everlasting life. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for your word today, Lord God. Namin pong napakinggan, Lord God, at hindi lamang ito manatili sa aming isipan, Lord God, but amin dito ito masunod at malakaran, Lord God, sa aming pong buhay. That we are the salt and light of this world, Lord God. That we 
we will we will be a good example to our family, to our friends, to our neighbor, to our colleagues, Lord God. Lord, we thank you so much for everything. We thank you so much for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to pay the penalty of all our sins, Lord God. Lord, we put our faith and trust in Him alone, Lord God, that you will provide all our material and physical, physical and spiritual needs, Lord God. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord God, that you are the King of kings, and you are the Lord of lords, that we worship on this place, Lord God. We bring back all the glory and honor to your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sige, awitan natin natin ng Panginoon. Oh 